talking about living again. Last week, we talked about your resurrection. We celebrated Easter Resurrection Sunday. And we talked about how since Jesus rose from the tomb, from the dead, that it was a covenant that we need to rise and we need to have a resurrection in our life. But talking about this post-Sunday resurrection, the first Sunday after, it's clearly visible to each one of us. It's one thing to, to rise. It's one thing to have a second chance. It's one thing to, to somehow come out of the tragedy or the hit that we've taken. It's one thing to come out of that death experience. It's one thing to, to come back. But it's another thing to get back in the game and to live life to the fullest extent that God has called you to. It's another thing to live again in the scriptures, in John chapter 20, and our scriptures are here. This is kind of like the first uh, account or the, the scriptures right after the empty tomb, right after the resurrection story. We kind of have, uh, we kind of have Jesus talking to his disciples and let's read the text here. Living again on the evening of the first day of the week when the disciples were together with the doors locked for fear of the Jewish leaders. Jesus came and stood among them and said, peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Verse 21. Again, Jesus said, peace be with you as the Father has sent me, I'm sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, their sins are forgiven. But if you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. We kind of concluded last week as we were talking about Lazarus. We kind of concluded that Jesus said to the ones around Lazarus to take off the, the dead man's clothes and to let him go. He did not want Lazarus to come out of the tomb with, with, the, the, with the, the dead man's clothes and to go through life crippled or handicapped. And we're kind of starting with that frame of mind this morning. We're kind of looking at this story in conjunction where the disciples knew, I guess, that the resurrection has taken place. We see that Jesus now fulfilled what he said. He said that in the third day he would rise again. The father, his father came through for him. He made it out of that death experience. Up from the tomb, he arose. You made it out of that thing that tried to bring you down to cripple you. You got through that divorce. You got through that, that job loss. You got through that thing that was intended to kill you, to ruin your life. You're here this morning because you survived the storm. You're here this morning because you made it. You're thankful. You're glad that you did not succumb to all those things that could have brought you down. Jesus came to the story here and he now was raised from the dead. He, he made it through. Death did not conquer him. The enemy, Satan, took his best shot, his final best shot. He tried many times before at his birth. It didn't work. He tried again when he, when he was called in in ministry. He said, throw yourself down. He tried to kill him, ruin his life. The enemy has tried to stop you many times before. It didn't work. And now on this final attempt, when he had all the religious leaders come against him, when society came against him and they killed him, this was supposed to stop Jesus once and for all. What you've been through, the enemy tried to stop you. The enemy tried to ruin your life, let's be honest. The enemy doesn't want you to, to be successful, to be married, to, to have the life that you've been called to. The enemy's tried to destroy you and to destroy your family. But here we see that Jesus wasn't content that the disciples were locked behind a closed door. Now, this is post-resurrection. This is post-coming through the, the, the death. The disciples were with Jesus. 
They, they followed him. They gave up much of their vocation. And they, 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 they sold themselves to this idea of following Christ. Now all of a sudden their savior, their master was killed. But now we see that Jesus made it through. But the, but the disciples had some residue of this hurt, this pain. They had some things that they couldn't get over, much like you and I. If you've been through a tragedy in your life, it's one thing to come out of it. It's another thing to completely recover and to move on and to leave yesterday behind and even go higher than you intended. And God used that pain, that hurt, as a platform to springboard you into your true destiny. That's what was going on here. Jesus was up from the tomb in chapter 20. He came out of it. The Father vindicated him. It was the real deal. Resurrection. The enemy didn't win out. But the disciples, it says here, were in a room with the doors locked for the fear of the Jews. The Jews are the ones that killed Jesus. The Jews, and we're not saying that, for the Bible says that we all actually had, 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 had a part in him being crucified because all of our sins. But these were the people of the time and in ancient times. They, they came against him, but, but now Jesus came up and he spent 40 days, and that's the week, that's where we're at now, before he went to the Father. And he tried to, he tried to repair and try to help them understand and somehow light another match under the disciples' feet so that they could move on with their life and it could really be what it was intended to be. So we have the 40 days. That's where we're at this first week here. This first week post-resurrection. And Jesus visits them for the first time. And the disciples, it says here where, where their doors locked for the fear of the Jewish leaders. Well, you could relate to that. You could understand that. How do they know that, sure, they killed Jesus, but how do they know now that they weren't next? Some of you aren't moving on in your life because you're looking back and something's holding you back. Some of you aren't gambling, taking that shot. Some of you aren't becoming all that God has called you to be because you're a little terrified of what could happen. You're, you're looking back and you say, I, I've been through the storm. Okay, I made it out, but I don't know if it could happen again. I don't want to take that chance. I don't want to go into that relationship. I don't want to try again. I don't want to fill out that application. I don't want to somehow build on that pain because I don't want to experience that pain again. So they kind of gathered around and we gather around and we kind of put some walls around us. We're thankful that we made it through. We're here today. But you see, it's one thing to be here. It's another thing to be excelling in your life the way that God wants you to. You see, there's some things in your life still left that God wants you to experience. There's some still things in your life that God wants you to do. There's some challenges. There's some things that he wants to bring you into. Don't leave it on the table, my brother, my sister. Don't allow the enemy to steal any more of what your future, what God has for you. You see, the enemy tried. The enemy took his best shot at your life. It didn't work. Sure, it was hard. It was painful. And you still have the scars. You have the residue. You could smell it a little bit. You're, you, you, you know that you've been through it. You know that you've been through the, the, the crucifixion as, as Jesus here. But it worked. You got through it. And here's the disciples. They're here, they're, 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 they're contemplating. Now Jesus is wanting to set them free. He's wanting them to live again. He's wanting them to, to build on what happened. I'm asking you a question this morning as we look here with the doors locked for fear of the Jews, what's locking you in? What's holding you back? What's keeping you from your best days out in front of you? Oh, you don't want to try or this? But let's, let's see what the scriptures have to say. The question this morning is, how are we going to live again? How are we going to go to the next level? How are we going to get to where we need to be? 
You know, I'm really not into alliteration anymore. I used to, we, when they teach that in homiletics where you kind of have uh, uh, three R's and you kind of build on that. They taught it. You know, I did that for years. You, I don't do it much here because I just like the scriptures to, to, to say what it is. But I kind of have a few alliterations this morning to help, uh, to help me along the way to, to stay on track. But as we see what Jesus is doing here, he was restoring them. He was bringing them back. And we, there's some things in the scriptures that help us. Jesus came and stood among them and said, peace be with you. So in our first thought, how Jesus is going to get us there. How is Jesus, how are you going to get back on track? How are you going to become all that God has called you to be? How are you going to recoup the losses? It's one thing to make it through, as we said, but it's another thing to go higher. They tell us that once you've been through a, a great recession, like they say we've been through, they say that we're supposed to have in four to five, even 6% growth. They say we've been having maybe two or two and a half. That's okay, but that's still not enough when you've been through so many losses, when so many homes have been taken back, so many jobs lost. They tell us that in our type of economy, that we're supposed to have a great comeback. Well, that's what I'm talking about in our life. You've been through some things. God wants you now to have a great comeback where all that pain, all that loss makes sense. All that hurt, now you're building upon it because it's part of the fray. It's part of the, the foundation of where God is truly bringing you. That thing you went through, you had to go through it in order for you to become that all God has called you to be. Jesus had to go through the, the crucifixion, the death, in order for him to become the savior of the world. There are some things built in your life that you don't understand, but lost, defeat, pain, hurt, it's part of it. But let's, first of all, he said Jesus came and stood among them and said, so our first thought is Jesus wants to affirm you. He wants to reassure you. We see here that he came and he stood among them. They were locked in fear of the Jews of what could happen. I remember I was going through a difficult time. I've said it here pretty openly. One of the ministry assignments uh, that, that I had, I was in charge of a, a, a drug rehab in, in Hawaii and it was really the most fruitful ministry, probably the best ministry that I had at the time to, up to that date. And I was thankful because I come from that. I was high school dropout and I was involved in drugs and that. So it, it's something that was really kind of fit me. But it, with one sense, it was kind of like the hardest also. We had like 500 kids come through the program. We, all, we always had at least 30, 40, 50 people that came out of prison or out of uh, broken situations and tried to get clean. But it seems like as the director, I was always fighting things off. It seems like when you had to discipline someone, they would call every authority in the book because you had to make a decision. You say, listen, if you go and sneak out at 2 in the morning and try to sleep with that 16-year-old neighbor here, you know, we're going to deal with you. So we always, as a director, I always had to make decisions and, you know, I felt like the Christian prison warden at times. But that was my job and I had tough skin, I guess, but I tried to do it with, you know, with, with love and, and things. As a matter of fact, I was accused many times of not kicking people out. I was always saying, come back in, come back in. But I, I remember that, you know, I went through this time, this hardship, and it seems like, man, one student and their parents, you know, they, they, they called the EPA on us. There's nothing we could do. They called the fire marshal on us. They called the, 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 the child welfare agents. We were fighting one agency, government agency, after another. And I was hard for me. I was a pastor at heart. And, you know, I lived in China a few years. I was, didn't have all the, the, the money to fight off all these things. And, you know, we didn't have the lawyers and different things. But so it was a, it was a tough time. We, we managed. We were just people that our staff that were all ex-drug addicts ourselves trying to, you know, do a ministry that, that, that God called us all to. But it was, it was hard. But I remember here, it says here that, came and stood among them. And I'm saying this, some of you have been through some things and I'm, I'm giving that point, stick with that illustration because I'm going to give it throughout the points here. But I remember at different times that, that God wanted to reaffirm 
and you've been through some things, you've been through some challenges, God's here today wanting to re reaffirm your calling. Reaffirm what he had for you from the beginning. He came initially and stood in the midst of them. They were locked in fear for they weathered a lot of storms. And Jesus just came in. He came kind of through the door. He didn't even knock. He, aren't you glad Jesus don't always knock? He just came right in the midst of them. Jesus is coming in the midst of your life today where you're at. He's not asking for your permission. He's here to restore you. He's here to help you. And right in the pain, right where the enemy tried to ruin you, he just came in the midst of it and tried to reassure them, reaffirm them that I said that it was going to work out and I'm back to show you that it has worked out. Death couldn't keep me down. Death couldn't keep me down. Listen, I want to tell you, some of you need reaffirming after going through that divorce, that loss. Some of you need reaffirming in your, in your manhood, in your womanhood, in your motherhood, after you've been through raising of a child. God's here to stand with you today to get your confidence back, to get back what you need so you could get back into life. Listen, now we go here. So the first thing, he wants to reassure you. He wants you, he wants you to be strong again. He, he wants to come back in your life. That's why you're here today. Because he's walked into your life. And he's, he stands next, beside you. He says, I never left you. I never left you nor forsaken you. I've been with you all the time. Yes, that's right. So here we go. I'm going to try to contain myself in these next points. So forgive me if you could turn me down if I get a little loud or something or if I raise my voice. But let's go here. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Well, what do you mean by that? What are you, what are you going to give us there, Pastor? Well, they were restored. First, they need to be reaffirmed. Now they need to be restored. I remember going through that. And then finally, I'm sorry to say, I kind of you know, uh, gave up on it. I, I finally resigned after maybe seven years. I brought 40 guys back here. But then one, one of them, you know, started doing the same thing. I kind of uh, gave up, sorry. But then that's when I met Pastor Joel and I was kind of down on my luck. Shouldn't say that as a pastor, not, not luck. But, I, but, then, but that's when God started to wanting to restore my life. And then I remember, you know, meeting Pastor Joel and, you know, Jesus is going to bring some people your way to stand with you. You know, he's going to, you know, and I remember standing on that stage when there's other pastors of churches of 10,000 standing next to Joel and, and shooting a commercial. I says, what am I doing here? I, I'm a nobody. I, I'm, I'm nothing. And he's standing with me. God wanted to reaffirm the original calling. God wants to reaffirm what he's doing in your life, my brother, my sister. He wants to give you the confidence back. Now he wants to restore you. What do you mean? He says, hey, hey, hey I, I want to show you, I want to show you my hands and my side. Death was meant to, to destroy. That thing was meant to destroy you, but it didn't work. You see, put your hands, Thomas, in my side. Did you know Thomas was the doubting Thomas? And then he went to India and became the missionary in all India. He wanted to restore the calling in Thomas's life. He said, he said here, put it in, in, in my hands and my side. God wants to do some things in your life. He wants to give you the revelation so you could get back in the game. So you could get back in, into being all that God has called you to be. So you could start that company all over again. You can, you can do those things that you dreamed about that, that, that was in the vision in your life that you gave up on because you've had a setback. Because something happened to you. He showed him his hands and his side. He was basically saying it didn't work. Satan tried back then. It didn't work back then. He, he did have some collateral damage. Two-year-olds were killed, yeah. Herod killed him. He, he tried to get me in the temptation in the desert. That didn't work. He tried to destroy my life with that addiction. That didn't work. He tried to, to do it with that thing to bring me down. It didn't work. And then he killed me. And some of you said, this is, this is something I could never recover from. This addiction, this, this betrayal, this pain, this hurt. I remember going through this, coming here for three months. I think I cried every day 
We, me and Sue and the kids, you know, I, I never wanted to be a failure. I always wanted to honor God. We spent a few years in China in a no bedroom with five kids. I always just, after I got saved, I was so thankful. I wanted to give God my all. But then something came in life that I never expected. And maybe I wasn't prepared. I don't know. Maybe I should have been smarter. Who knows? We all could say how we could have done it better, right? But, but then I remember driving from the West Coast. We, we took our time and went to the West Coast. And every day, I didn't want the kids to know it. I'd be listening to music and crying and saying, Lord, could you bring me out of this? Can you get me back on track? But then I saw that God had a plan from the beginning. Friend, my brother, my sister, God has a plan in your life. He wants to restore you where you're at today. He wants to bring you back. He wants to show you that what the enemy started had didn't work. You might have died in the process. You might have been through hell, it seems like. As a matter of fact, Jesus went to hell. He went, but he conquered the grave. And he's up here now trying to get his disciples to say, Listen, I want to tell you the whole story again about the death, burial, resurrection. I want to tell it to you. I want you to be restored. And he starts telling it all again. That's why it's so important that we hear it all over again. We set aside Sundays. Listen, the best thing you could do is come to the Lord's house once a week and give your life and your heart to him. He's restoring you. He's reaffirming you. You want to be, you want to be a millionaire? Get in the house of God. He'll make you a millionaire. No, no I'm sorry to say that. You want to be smart? Get in the house of God. Get close to Jesus. He'll let you become all that he's called you to be. That's right. Amen. Well, okay, forget the millionaire business. I got overworked. But maybe there's a, one or two here. One or two of you could receive that, huh? Maybe that's one or two. Okay, listen. He showed them his hands aside. Why? He wanted them to be restored. God wants to show you that your pain was the plan all along. Your loss was the plan all along. In preparing us to see us, I see that God, you had a plan all along. You, you, you're, we're there all along during my death experience. You were in the midst of it all. And then we see here again, Jesus said, peace be with you. As the Father sent me, I'm sending you. We see, first of all, that Jesus reaffirmed them. We see that he restored them. Now he was recommissioning them. Some of you need to be recommissioned in your life. What do you mean? I'm 68. I'm 72. I'm 16. I, I've lived life. I haven't lived life. I, what do you mean? You've been through it. God wants to recommission you into the calling that he's had from you from the very beginning. Listen, it says here, again, Jesus said, peace be with you. Sometimes Jesus has to say it all over again for people like you and me with thick heads. So he was saying it again in, in restoring us and reaffirming us as he, as he stood next to us. God's going to call someone to stand next to you. Matter of fact, God's going to stand next to you. But then he's going to restore you. He's going he's to heal you. He's going to cleanse your heart. This is all part of being restored. This is all part of being reaffirmed. You coming to the house of God. He knows that you need the Holy Spirit this morning. Well, then it says, peace be with you as the Father sent me. I'm sending you. Whoa, 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 whoa. Now you're talking about this, Lord? You're talking about me becoming all you've called me to be? You see, Jesus talked this way before he was killed. Now that he up from the grave, he starts talking again. I want you to start talking about the destiny that God has from you from the very beginning. You need to start talking about the destiny. You need to start talking about those visions, those dreams that God has for you. No, I, I can't. Yes, you can. God's going to restore you. He's going to reaffirm you. And you've got to be recommissioned. And all that pain, all that loss, all that death, that those things you went through are going to be a stepping stone. It's going to be a foundation. Matter of fact, it's going to make you into the better woman and, and, or man of God that he's called you. You need to be recommissioned. Verse 22. And with that, he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. Was it going to include these two? But they're probably the best points. They need to be refueled. They need to be re refired. Pick your R. How's that? It says, and with that, he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. How are you going to make it? 
You see, I'm a high school dropout. I did finish college. I know some of you say, I could tell you're a high school dropout. You're not the best. English, I understand. Uh, I listen to my tapes. Well, no, I don't. Uh, I know. But listen, some of you say, how, how are you going to get there? You might not be the smartest cookie in the cookie jar. You might not have the most money. You might not have the most influence. You might have the, listen, but tell you something. But with God, with God breathing on you, with God breathing, there's nothing you can't do. There's nothing that's too difficult for God in your life. Listen, God chose the disciples that were nobodies. God wants to choose you to recommission, to bring you to where you need to be. Peter was a fisherman. Every one of them were, were, were people that, that, that society said couldn't make it. I, I like being the underdog because you're not the underdog when the Holy Spirit breathes into you. He will give you ideas. He will give you anointing. He will give you everything you need to become the person that God has called you. It's better than any education. Oh, I'm for education. Uh, my son's going to law school. Well, he needs a little bit more of the, oh, well, I shouldn't say that. Uh, that's good. Keep going there. But you can't still, you still got to have the Holy Spirit. I'd rather have a, if a law degree of Holy Spirit. I'd take the Holy Spirit any day of the, of the word. Listen, listen. You can't substitute the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is going to tear down the demons in your life. The Holy Spirit is going to bring through the things in your life. Okay. And Jesus and breathed on them to receive the Holy Spirit. He knew. He knew that they were going to go out and face those people that killed them. He knew. And he, and he breathed. Some of you need a, a, a fresh anointing. When I read the scriptures now, after been through everything, I'm a new, different person. I can't read the scriptures without seeing restoration, hope. That's why I think that God connected me with Pastor Joe. It's just, that's the way I think now. I think restoration. I think that God wants to do something in your life and turn it around. Just, this is the way it is now. After you've been through a shipwreck, after you've been through a, a hardship, you could see that God could do it, but I can't do it on my own. You can't build that business on your own. You can't have that marriage on your own. You need the Holy Spirit to equip you. You need the Holy Spirit to cause you to be the husband, the, the mother, the father that he's called you to be. Don't try to live life on your own. Well, you're not. That's why you're here. Listen to me yell and shout at you. No, I'm not. Uh, but breathe the Holy Spirit. Our last point. If you forgive anyone's sins, their sins are forgiven. Oh, I like this. Now we're moving into a whole new dimension. Now we're moving into a whole new cycle, a whole new thing. This is really what it's been intended all for. Let me tell you, friends, God's going to put on you a new authority. God's going to put on you, let me get my heart, a new repositioning. God's going to put on your life a new calling, a new repositioning that's greater. The Bible says greater works will you do. Jesus said it about you here, Christians. You're going to do greater works than when he traveled the earth. Why? Because the Holy Spirit indwells within you and he wants you to shake up this world for him. Someone get Irwin back. He'll get us shouting. No, I'm joking. He had to leave. You know, we had about 10, 15 people call in. I'm glad they call in and let us know. Text that they were sick, this and the other. So let's pray. But we're, we're thankful. But let, here we go. If you forgive anyone's sins, their sins are forgiven. Friend, I don't know how you're going to get it back. I don't know how you're going to climb that mountain. But God is about to take you into a deeper realm than you've ever dreamed of. And then you're going to look back and you say, it was never about you in the beginning. It's about what God has for you and you doing his will in your life. Your kids, your kids, great, they're your kids, but it's about the next generation and what God wants to do and use them in their life. Sure, sure, your money, I, I'm glad you got some money. But your money, it's not about your money. It's what God can do in and through your life. Listen, you're about ready to take on a repositioning. You've been through the fire. If not now, when? God came back and he, Jesus came and he stood amongst them. He, he stood, he wanted to reaffirm, I'm with you. 
I've never been left you. I'm with you always. Forty days before he ascended back to the Father, he said, don't touch me right now. Right before the verse. And, and he was there and, and, and then he wanted to, to, for them to rediscover. But here, he repositioned them. God's going to give you those things that you need to accomplish your destiny. Listen, I encourage you to speak them into, oh, I got to be a little careful now. Some people get mad at Joel for saying this. I declare that I, you know, that I have the mind of Christ. You know, people get mad at Joel for declaring what God has for him. Listen, I think that we ought to start declaring what God has for us in our life. Listen, you know, I'm declaring, I'm declaring, I'm declaring that God is going to bring people that need the Lord here. You need to declare that God's going to give you that business. You need to declare that your child is going to come to God. You need to declare, you need to speak into the heavenly realm. you got the authority, the blood of Jesus. you got to cast down those things that are hindering you. Those devils that come against you, you say, in the name of Jesus, I command you, you defeated foe Satan, that you get under my feet. You have no authority over my life. You have no authority over my kids. You have no authority over my family. Now you're repositioned. You've been blood bought. You're repositioned. You're filled with the Holy Spirit. Oh, you're, I know it's a little hard on that Tuesday. You don't feel filled, but you're filled. And you can take, you could take your destiny by storm and God could bring you into the life that he's called you to. Friend, friend. Some of you saying, man, Pastor Joel, don't get that excited. I know. But his, his dad used to, second generation. But listen, God has a plan for your life in closing. God wants to do something in your life. Don't leave it on the table. Jesus came through those locked doors, wanted to set them free. God wants to set you free. Oh, I know it's going to be time for you to say, I can't do it. Not qualified to do it. You don't know what you did. Oh, you screwed up last time. You could screw up again. Shut up, devil, you liar. The enemy's going to try to hold you back. Trying to get you to get, to get all balled up with that addiction. Oh, yeah, okay. That addiction, it's going to try to ruin me. But I'm going to step out of that addiction. And I'm going to become all that God has called me to be. I'm not going to allow these things to ruin my life anymore. I'm going to be a little smarter. I've been repositioned. I, I, I've been repositioned into the destiny that God has for me. i got to quit, Father. Be with your people, we pray. Help your people. If there's anyone here that would say, close your eyes. Just give me two minutes and we're out of here. Is there anybody here that would say, hey, pastor, I need Jesus. I need God in my heart. I want to rededicate my life. I want to be cleansed this morning. I want to accept the Lord as my Savior. I need Jesus. If that's you, no one looking around. No one's going to embarrass you. We're just going to pray together where you're at. But if that's you, raise your hand. If there's anyone here, God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Okay, let's say this together, can we? Let's all repeat this together. Whether you raise your hand or not, let's repeat this. Dear Jesus... I love you. I'm sorry for my mistakes. I'm sorry for my sin. Please forgive me. Come into my heart. Cleanse me. Forgive me. Help me. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now let me pray for all of us. Father, help your people.